Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you better understand HDMI extenders, what they do, why you may use one, and help you decide between the two most popular connection types on the market today. Now an HDMI extender in its most basic form does exactly what the name implies. It allows you to extend an HDMI connection between your media device and your monitor. Now depending on how far you need to stretch that connection, you have a few different choices between the type of HDMI extender you use. And the reason you might need to use an HDMI extender is because HDMI, as wonderful as that connection topology is, it has limits on how far you can separate the media device from the monitor. And typically, if you're watching 4K content or higher resolutions, you want to keep that cable as short as possible, typically under 10 feet. Or if you're watching lower resolutions like 1080p or 720, you can stretch it a little further, but if you get beyond 20 or 25 feet, you can have all kinds of problems in that HDMI transport where maybe you're not getting an HDCP handshake, the HDMI is blinking out, you're getting intermittent connections, and that's because the HDMI signal on its own can't transfer across the cable that long. And that's exactly what an HDMI extender is built to help you with. These allow you to extend that HDMI connection, in some cases hundreds of meters or thousands of meters away, depending on the type of HDMI extender you pick. Now fundamentally, there are two different types of HDMI extenders. Ones that are based on a connection topology between the transmitter and receiver, that's either a CAT5e, CAT6, or CAT7, so typical LAN cable. And the other type is a fiber channel based, and it's either a simplex or a duplex connection. And depending on how far you're gonna transfer that media, what type of resolution the media has, and your budget, you have to choose between these two different types of HDMI extenders. And now I'll discuss maybe the benefits, the pros and the cons between these two different styles. The simplest and least expensive HDMI extender kit to use is based on a LAN connection. It's less expensive, but there are challenges where it can actually transfer higher resolutions over a very long distance, unless you get a very sophisticated set of HDMI extenders. There are kits out there that'll do that, but they tend to be very pricey. The advantage to an HDMI extender using a LAN cable is you may already have the cable in your home. A lot of newer homes were completely wired for CAT cables, whether it be CAT5e, CAT6, or CAT7. So you might only be able to plug this in to the cabling that's already in your home and not have to worry about running a cable. But the challenge again is, a LAN-based system typically is lower resolution, shorter distances. It's perfect for homes where you've got to extend maybe a media player to an upstairs bedroom or downstairs in the den. This may be the perfect solution for you. On the other hand, the fiber channel based solutions will go much further and carry much higher resolutions between the transmitter and receiver. These can go thousands of meters between your primary site and your secondary site over nothing more than a simplex cable like this. The downside to this type of connection topology tends to be more expensive in both the transmitter and the receiver because it can transmit that data further and it can transmit at higher resolutions. The other challenge is you're going to have to run a dedicated cable between the primary and secondary sites, which a lot of times entails expensive cables and a lot of labor to get the cable strung between those sites. So where you'd find the use for both of these, this is typically a home environment or short connections with high resolution. This is typically a commercial environment where maybe you're looking for security cameras at the outside edge of a parking lot for that data to be sent back to a monitor in a security booth someplace so people can watch it. But again, this is becoming more and more common in consumer environments as well. As resolutions start to climb beyond 4K to 8K and even further beyond that, these can handle those higher resolutions without a problem. A couple other things you want to look at for both of these solutions, whether you go with the land-based or the fiber-based, are things like audio extraction, which is really nice to be able to extract the audio from the media stream being sent between those locations and at the remote location, pass that audio stream along to a soundbar or home stereo system for better quality audio. Another key feature you want to look for in any HDMI extension kit you're considering is an infrared blaster kit or some way to capture the remote control signals at the second location and send those back over that connection topology to the primary site to actually rebroadcast those so you can control the content from that remote site. If you don't have that type of infrared blaster set up, you can basically start the media, but you can't control it. So you can't stop it, you can't fast forward, rewind. It really doesn't give you a lot of control over the media. Another key feature with a lot of the land-based systems is something called power over cable technology, which means you'll use one power supply at either the primary or secondary location, and it'll actually send the power over that same land connection to the remote location, which means you only need one power supply to operate the entire system. That greatly simplifies your wiring setup when you're putting these uh, units into installation. So those are some of the key things between them. And again, the advantages of IP-based HDMI extenders 
has to do mostly with the higher resolutions that this demands and the distance. That's really the key. These you'll find really won't transmit much more than a couple of hundred meters at most. These will go thousands and thousands of meters because over here you're dealing with electrical signals that are sent through a twisted pair of wiring. Over here you're dealing with light signals that really doesn't have any degradation and it's traveling at the speed of light. So it allows you to take a higher resolution media stream, send it further away and send it in higher clarity than you can typically do with a LAN solution. But each individual installation is different. So you have to think about those three things when you're considering which of the HDMI extenders you want to go with. What's your budget? What type of resolution media content do you expect to send to that second location? And third, and probably most importantly, how far away from the primary location is the secondary monitor that you'd like to enjoy that content on? Once you figure that out, you'll have an easy path to either a LAN-based HDMI extender or an IP-based extender as well. So the choice is completely yours, but O-Ray offers a wide range of HDMI extenders in both LAN-based and fiber-based connections. I hope you found this clip helpful, and until next time, thanks again for watching.